Hi all, I have another magnificent and extremely celebrated Mikhail Tower game to show you today. This was against Vasily Smyslov, still in the 1959 Bled Zagreb Belgrade Candidates tournament, which was crucial tournament to qualify to play Mikhail Botvinnik in 1960. So against Vasily Smyslov, who, as we know, was later to become also a world chess champion. So this is a classic clash of the giants here. Tau starts with e4. We have the Korokan. So it's got a reputation for being quite a solid, uh, reliable opening. d3, already a bit of a surprise. The usual move is, of course, d4. We have d5. And now white plays knight d2. So shielding from a queen exchange, and it's like a cold spring, a king's engine attack type setup could emerge. Usually white would play things like knight f3, g3, typically. Here we see e5, we do see knight g f3. Now already, the opening is pretty crucial for setting the scene and, uh, and the resources you're gonna get later. This, this next move, knight d7, is interesting. It might be a little bit inferior technically to some other alternatives. Quite often, bishop d6, for example, is played. For example, like this. This is okay. Uh, also, I mean, there's some other alternatives here. I mean, knight, um, which, which, should, which should be fairly okay for black uh i mean it seems a bit pedantic to say that knight d7 might not be the greatest move but uh what we do have here is a kind of surprising looking move for mikhail Tal in response so this is this is highly nuanced is knight d7 passive under what circumstances well actually with this next move d4 you might think hold on that pawn's just used up another move. But it's against the knight on d7. This tension in the center, this massive tension now in the center is intriguing already. And it seems uh, Smyslov is keen to resolve this central tension quite quickly. Uh, if white played something like g3 instead, then that's um, fine. You know, we we keep the sense of kind of it's it isn't liable to be broken open immediately. It's about equal this position, but the the way we have it played here, you know, White hasn't committed to any fianchetto. So in a way, because White hasn't committed, you know, the bishop doesn't have to go to g two. E two looks very passive, but when White plays d four, of course, the bishop is given some potentially interesting opportunities elsewhere if the center really is blown wide open. And in fact, we do get the center being blown wide open now. This open center emerges. Spinozov takes like this, and then plays e takes d4. And you might wonder why on earth is black kind of, in a way, showing that his knight's a little bit passive and he's also really giving this bishop now major opportunities. This position here already looks dangerous. And so actually that was a kind of mystery for me to investigate this position. Why would black play e takes d4 here? The thing is, this is already uh, a tricky position. This really is. Uh, if black tries to be too energetic with f5, then actually this is really strong for white. There can be variations where white is just sacking a knight and the king is really exposed. This kind of stuff is very, very good for white. It's, it's brilliant compensation. Black cannot be too eager to do something like f5. Uh, the thing is, yeah, d takes e4. I mean, there might have been uh, some some other ideas here instead of, you know, e takes d4 might have been a bit safer, actually. This position looks better for white, though, if white's grabbing that bishop. Uh, if black just retreats here, then this position, 
should be fine should be fine but black has got the ice age queen's pawn so it seems in any scenario there's there's some little downside which is annoying <laughs> so it's a case of choosing which which scenario but here the center in the game continuation the center blown wide open it immediately implies in concrete terms knight d6 check is very lucrative here a lot a lot of players might be attracted to this just to win the dark squared bishop Tal though plays bishop g5 and some have expressed the opinion that Tal, Mikhail Tal is already a great psychologist he wants to avoid any simplification and keep the queens on against it against Smyslov he felt that Smyslov perhaps would be more uncomfortable in a more complex kind of position and if we look at the psychology of knight d6 the psychology this position here actually black has actually got queen b6 threatening to get the queens off with queen takes f2 and knight e4 check and it's difficult because it's stopping any bishop d2 or bishop move pressure on b2 if white has to play knight d2 to stop all the tactics then there's this and it's no big deal all of a sudden okay white's got the bishops but it's not a big deal so this kind of stuff although lucrative to get the bishop that's another mystery for me you see i'm trying to unravel all these little mysteries you know why is it knight d6 played so it's fascinating bishop g5 the intention just to castle queen side keep the queens on have a really you know more more complex rich position to play with we have bishop e7 and again here knight d6 seems so lucrative but uh castling queen side was played if we have knight d6 here there's actually bishop takes there's actually a forcing move here knight e4 black has knight e4 again with the idea of trying to get the queens off or or simplification that would win a piece so uh white has to play uh, bishop takes d8 and we get the queens off no no we don't want this even though this might be better for white technically it might be a bit too comfortable for Vasily Smyslov <laughs> his style of play his persona his genetics would would appreciate that but no no Tao is imposing his genetics he wants an exciting game he doesn't want to go into a Smyslov style position castling queenside this is more of an attacking game now okay black castles if knight takes trying to simplify well that bishop's pinned here and the, the knight's also pinned so forget that black castles but now we do see we do see knight d6 here Queen a5 though it seems very very energetic because sometimes it's shaky to castle queenside the a2 pawn is loose black is also threatening potentially taking here and knight e4 hitting the queen and bishop so you know these two pieces are both potentially tactical liabilities although they are aggressive on the fifth and sixth and black hasn't got aggressive pieces these do represent tactical liabilities uh so we have bishop c4 at least protecting a2 uh, <clears throat> if okay b5 was played here and you might think well what about what i mentioned bishop takes d6 this position white does actually have queen e7 and this might be okay this position perhaps white should take the queens off but there's still there's more there's a bit of pressure at least here yeah, even if the queens come off uh, that would be better than knight takes because knight e5 hits the bishop on c4 and this is going to be okay for black okay so uh again you know bishop takes d6 is um it's interesting but b5 and this is trying to create a third piece liability by the liability if the bishop drops back then surely c5 c4 is dangerous trying to trap this bishop so where is this bishop going isn't this just crazy all of white's pieces are nearly loose here the, the two bishops and the knight bishop d2 is played now 
<laughs> I've done an in-depth analysis of this position and <laughs> just from a scientific point of view I'm sorry I couldn't help it I needed to investigate this position from a scientific perspective and it turns out yeah it tells me if he's good but it turns out why actually might be doing uh, quite well with with other stuff here Bishop takes f7 is actually really dangerous it's actually also very easy for engines to underestimate this position here is really dangerous for black uh, for example taking Queen e3 is a key move to stop Bishop e6 because there's Knight g5 now imagine black plays h6 this is all dangerous stuff when the Queen and Knight cooperate like this if we have this position it's close to actually on my analysis close to losing it might be losing basically because of g4 the analysis is in the notes for the game but this is just all pretty crushing for black black's getting absolutely crushed in these lines it has to give up this queen because h6 is now for an hg yeah this this stuff after g4 here is appears to be uh, completely losing if knight takes queen takes f5 if bishop e4 uh plan with g5 yeah as mentioned um if bishop takes rook this stuff is just losing here although bishop d5 threatens the pawn this is this is losing for black because there's stuff like f5 check bringing the queen back for knight g6 and here black is losing uh there's <laughs> things like this now yeah in in all the variations basically i've come to the conclusion technically i've come to this conclusion in this game that bishop takes f7 might actually be close to winning um check it out for yourselves i mean uh with, with a strong engine this this is a really dangerous position for black anyway so in the game bishop d2 was played queen a6 now it is it is very tricky as i say if the bishop drops back this this is just winning for black c5 because it's going to be c4 trapping the bishop and also you know this this piece is now completely loose as well on d6 so if knight takes here you know we're going to have c4 and that's the end of that so um we have knight f5 instead hitting the bishop bishop drops back so the bishop can't really go back right because of c5 so what does Tal play here? He plays actually an incredible move. Incredible move. Incredible. <laughs> and and this this is this is what makes Tal really special and spectacular. He had a spectacular rise to his 1960 match. This is like a major like candidates tournament. So to play a move like this, it might seem a bit of a coffee house move, as they say. <laughs> what what do you think Tal played in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, starting from now. <laughs> Fisher didn't think much of this. This is this is one of the most celebrated games of of the fifties to sixties yeah of the sixties yeah. Uh, but Fisher said something about this game. Well, what was it about this game? Like uh, Tal just sacrificed the bishop. What was that all about? He said basically to that effect, as if Black might be able to. Yeah. Okay. Be be fine here. Okay. So why can't Black take the bishop? Now. Going to h4 does mean that queen g5 next is coming, hitting g7. So that's the concern in this position. That's the concern. Black did take the bishop. We have queen g5 threatening mate. And there's various ways to defend g7 in this position. In the game, we had knight h5. That's fine. 
I'll just show you some things. Knight e8, we could just take here. This position is fine actually. This is nifty because it means the king's given d2, if any check here, and it's actually also pointing at black's king. So that's just nifty. And this is good for white, this position, because also queen a5, white wouldn't mind the exchange of queens here. White has an advantage. Uh, if we go back also in this position, let's have a look at g6 now. So on g6, check. There's potential just for perpetual check, but let's throw in bishop c3. Here. is crushing for white white is winning but let's rewind all this stuff this is quite complicated the, the g6 stuff so i mentioned knight h6 knight f5 so king g8 is is um here instead of rookie eight let's have queen takes a2 this line threatening mate and this position is just draw by perpetual so queen takes a2 mate might actually indirectly just force white to take a perpetual in this g6 stuff it's it's complicated the variety of different defenses to defend the mate on g7 <laughs> so anyway we have knight h5 which seems a really resourceful way because it's hitting the queen it's defending g7 limiting white's options uh we have knight check queen takes h5 Now queen takes a2 threatens this mate in one queen a1 check. Tal gets to play bishop c3, giving his king an escape square and pinning the g7 pawn. Now it's around about here. We'll go back to Fisher's opinion about this game. Didn't black have bishop f6? Actually, Fisher's right, black did have bishop f6 here, and it may be in fact the very best move to play bishop f6. It unpins the pawn, so it's a kind of tactic in a way when you unpin stuff. People think about just pinning stuff, but unpinning stuff, it actually adds a lot to black's king safety. If knight g5, this looks menacing because knight takes and queen queen mating, that can be taken, and f6. If we reach this position, it's just going to be another perpetual. White's in a dangerous position himself uh, so th there's some fascinating variations here on bishop f6 uh, if we look at uh, knight g5 if we look at knight takes f7 as an alternative to knight g5 this is fascinating knight g5 here h6 again this is just going to lead to it looks like it's just going to lead to a perpetual white's going to be forced to take a perpetual uh, in these lines so it seems yeah bishop f6 um going back all the way bishop f6 might be something to really think about check out the notes in the uh description of the video uh there's some fascinating stuff there okay we have knight f6 So I guess we can label this the first critical mistake because white actually has a strong tactic and is definitely better after this next move. Absolutely definitely better. Um, can you see what white plays? <laughs> if I give you five seconds, starting from there, white's play. Yes, Tal's moves do bring a smile to my face. They do. <laughs> and anyone else watching his games. <laughs> uh, yes, Queen takes f7. Because of the back row issue. We've got a major back row issue here, yeah? 
you know if it takes just to demonstrate the you know, check and then we're mating because actually the knight's supporting g8 for rook takes mating so black cannot take that he tries actually check first and it looks as though hold on surely there's no back row issue the thing is the rook is now hitting the queen and although there's no back row issue <laughs> black's losing now He's in effect losing the exchange because what we have is rook takes queen, knight takes, rook takes here. And if you notice, white's actually the exchange up. He's got two rooks, bishop and knight. Yeah, the exchange up. The game continues not too long check king e6 so knight takes c6 now a pawn up officially check the king comes to the center not minding bishop b6 there's two pawns hanging here but this is a bit of a poison pawn there's always bishop b6 but this one's attacked no time to take eggs knight takes check so the bishop's hanging as well but if the bishop goes there then there's no bishop b6 resource so we could probably just take there and then even well we can just take on a7 maybe so black played uh bishop b6 bishop d4 and here uh smizlov resigned he's just exchanged down in this final position it's actually quite tricky black can avoid losing a piece he doesn't have to take on d4 that would lose a piece because we have check and we're going to be doing something like this to win the knight next on e4 so that's no good that loses a piece um, if the knight moves back then that's no good because we seem to be losing uh, material there maybe there's some resources here for black but it looks absolutely terrible he's currently two pieces down yeah the best move if black wants to immediately like save losing a piece appears to be knight c5 from an engine perspective that safeguards both of the pieces but also there's other ways bishop b7 or bishop d7 this one it, like both of them end up protecting the rook uh, against um, this pin and also here we're protecting the knight but essentially white's the exchange up right and he's gonna he's gonna be pawn pawn or two up as well whatever happens so it doesn't really matter about black's resources here is essentially the exchange down he doesn't have to lose another piece here but he resigned here anyway, just uh, knowing that his possession was fundamentally busted. Uh, I think the game demonstrates quite a lot of psychology, Tal navigating into a game which he thought Vasily Smyslov would be uncomfortable when he was proven right. Keep the queens on, keep the complexity going. Opposite side castling in effect. It seems though kind of outrageous that all of White's pieces potentially were nearly proven loose but the bishop was nearly proven trapped this bishop was nearly proven to be subject to forks the knight on d6 was definitely proven to be loose in some of the variations somehow all of white's pieces made it <clears throat> and created something beautiful here but yeah so a testament to psychology navigation and psychology of tactics as well <laughs> a fantastically interesting game if not a scientifically correct game, but superbly interesting. One for the spectators, one for us on YouTube to enjoy. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.